A man who dares to waste one hour of time has not discovered the value of life. Ignorance more frequently begets confidence than does knowledge. Animals, whom we have made our slaves, we do not like to consider our equal. Man tends to increase at a greater rate than his means of subsistence. The love for all living creatures is the most noble attribute of man. My mind seems to have become a kind of machine for grinding general laws out of large collections of facts. I have tried lately to read Shakespeare, and found it so intolerably dull that it nauseated me. On the ordinary view of each species having been independently created, we gain no scientific explanation. A scientific man ought to have no wishes, no affections, a mere heart of stone. I am not apt to follow blindly the lead of other men. Intelligence is based on how efficient a species became at doing the things they need to survive. Blushing is the most peculiar and most human of all expressions. I love fools' experiments. I am always making them. The highest possible stage in moral culture is when we recognize that we ought to control our thoughts. This preservation of favorable variations and the rejection of injurious variations, I call natural selection or the survival of the fittest. If the misery of our poor be caused not by the laws of nature, but by our institutions, great is our sin. The survival of preservation of certain favored words in the struggle for existence is natural selection. Keep steadily in mind that each organic being is striving to increase, that each at some period of its life, has the struggle for life, and suffer great destruction. The war of nature is not incessant. The vigorous, the healthy, and the happy survive and multiply. I have called this principle, by which each slight variation, if useful, is preserved, by the team of natural selection. I cannot persuade myself that a beneficent and omnipotent God would have designedly created parasitic wasps with the express intention of their feeding within the living bodies of caterpillars. It is those who know little, and not those who know much, who so positively assert that this or that problem will never be solved by science. Man tends to increase at a greater rate than his means of subsistence. To kill an error is as good a service as, and sometimes even better than, the establishing of a new truth or fact. A moral being is one who is capable of reflecting on his past actions and their motives, of approving of some and disapproving of others. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. There is grandeur in this view of life, with its several powers, having been originally breathed by the Creator into a few forms or into one. Besides love and sympathy, animals exhibit other qualities connected with the social instincts which in us would be called moral. Great is the power of steady misrepresentation. I see no good reasons why the views given in this volume should shock the religious views of anyone. Man selects only for his own good, nature only for that of the being which she tends. We stopped looking for monsters under our bed when we realized that they were inside us. What a book a devil's chaplain might write on the clumsy, wasteful, blundering, low, and horribly cruel work of nature. The mystery of the beginning of all things is insoluble by us, and I for one must be content to remain an agnostic. Man is descended from a hairy, tailed quadruped, probably arboreal in its habits. If the misery of the poor be caused not by the laws of nature, but by our institutions, great is our sin. I am turned into a sort of machine for observing facts and grinding out conclusions. We must, however, acknowledge, as it seems to me, that man with all his noble qualities, still bears in his bodily frame the indelible stamp of his lowly origin. 
How paramount the future is to the present when one is surrounded by children. A man's friendships are one of the best measures of his worth. False facts are highly injurious to the progress of science, for they often endure long. But false views, if supported by some evidence, do little harm, for everyone takes a salutary pleasure in proving their falseness.